Today we're going to be taking a look at a Grand Power K100 X-Trim. The Grand Power company has been around for many years and has recently started becoming imported into the United States by Eagle Imports. Um, all of those are going to be the newer Mark 12s, which is basically a universal platform now amongst the Grand Powers. Um, the K100 is their base model, which already has more features than most of the base model guns I'm seeing. The great part about this gun is I love double action, single action guns. And this has a phenomenal double action trigger. It comes in out of the box at about eight and a half pounds, where a lot of guns are coming out at 10, 12, and 15 pounds. It's fairly light. It is a polymer gripped gun. I can't really call it a frame because there's a chassis that rides inside of this frame that holds all the trigger parts. Another awesome feature is it is completely ambidextrous. I have a few left-handed friends, including my fiance, and the left-handed features of it having a slide release, magazine release, and safety all already set up that you don't have to change a bunch of parts, you don't have to do anything, just pick it up and shoot it is very important. For sights, this is the, this being the X-Trim, it's got a scallop slide, a set of lightning cuts which make it look pretty aggressive, and the sights which I just spoke about um, are front fiber optic and a rear Novak style sight which actually provides a pretty good sight picture. I'm sure the target sights will provide a little bit better sight picture, but I really like the smaller sights. They don't take up as much space on the target. And with all Grand Powers, they have a rotating barrel design. Or I should say all the 9mm and 40s and 45s. I've never handled a 22. But that rotating barrel design is very similar to one that Beretta ran in their Cougar and their PX4 series. This series of guns has been somewhat successful in the United States, but they have... This rotating barrel design is much less clunky. It's very smooth coming back during the recoil. Um, one of the features of the trigger, with the hammer down for double action mode, the safety does not work. I don't feel that you need a safety for a heavier double action trigger. That we, a double action being when you have to pull the trigger and pull, use that to pull the hammer all the way to the rear with a really long pull. I don't see a need for a safety. But it, when you want to carry a cocked and lock, the safety goes up. And right now, this is a very smooth, low-profile safety. I like the lower-profile safeties a lot, especially for carry. And for one that I never will use the, the safety on for competition shooting, I prefer the lower-profile safeties. They're the next up or top-of-the-line model, the Excalibur, has a little longer slide, a bull barrel, which will make it illegal in IDPA, and a set of target rear sights. Those features to me weren't as important as it being able to be an IDPA legal gun. And also the fact that the Excalibur is almost impossible to find in the United States right now. Uh, there are more that I've been told are coming in in the immediate future, but waiting on that may be a something, it's not something I'm willing to do right now. I'm a rather impatient person. And magazine wise, the magazine well on this gun, and which is the same chassis or polymer frame as the Excalibur, is very smooth and goes in very easily. Uh, I was actually pretty impressed with this. It goes in a lot quicker and easier than my M&P did. Uh, the recoil impulse, I've shot about 15 rounds through this gun. The recoil impulse is more into the palm of your hand instead of making the front sight flip. This gun comes with one recoil spring. It is a red uh, flat wire spring that is made for heavier loads. I'll be getting a uh, basically a rounded wire spring in the very near future in a lighter weight, and that should mostly eliminate the recoil. I think that has been one of the biggest things with the Excalibur. Everybody says it has almost no recoil it ships with a correctly light recoil spring. And it also has a recoil calibration pack, so if you want to shoot heavier NATO loads or whatever, it's got a recoil spring in there for that. 
This comes with the one recoil spring. That is the, the biggest change I would like to see. Um, I'm not a fan of plastic triggers on a gun, but this actually felt very good except for one small casting burr that was on the bottom corner of it. So after about the first 15 minutes of dry fire, it started to get to, get to my index finger. I'm very impressed with the fit and finish of this gun. The fit of the gun is definitely on par with most of the higher end 1911s that cost twice this. The scalloped and lightened slide is another feature that is extremely sought after in, in most competitions. That's one of the first things you do to reduce recoil is lighten your, your reciprocating mass. I have the largest grip installed as with most polymer gripped and framed guns now you can change out the size of your grip. This piece slides off the back and while there is no mechanical retaining mechanism, tension does keep it in place. And there are lines that go up here and these latch in. So you'll need some kind of a sharp instrument, a knife, uh, wide, very wide bladed screwdriver or something to, that's very thin to slide in here or back here to kind of get it to all to move to the rearward. Um, this has a, a thicker web area for your hand where the others get consecutively smaller. Uh, I have not tried the smallest ones yet because they do not feel very comfortable in my hand. But this gun comes with four grip options from the factory. Most at, come with three at the most. A lot of them, you'll get one or two. Sometimes you'll have to get, you'll just get one and that's it. You have to buy the rest. The rest of the things that came in the box with this gun, uh, you have to lift up the top. Get a little desiccant pack. A set of new front sights if you need them higher or lower or you don't like fiber optic which i'm not a big fan of fiber optic a very well-made bore brush because i say well-made because it's got a tip that's covered a lot of these i used to buy did not have the tip covered so if they got a little off you're in trouble a instruction safety manual basically reviews your gun safety rules um a little grand power warranty card in it uh, for your records, you can put your other stuff in it, uh, how to take the gun down. Um, putting it back together was a little bit of a chore with a heavier recoil spring in it, but not incredibly difficult. I feel that this is going to be a great contender for USPSA and IDPA competition. I feel the regular K100 is one of the more well put together base model guns and you have the K100X trim and then you have the Excalibur. Um, the Excalibur, as soon as we get more of them into the U.S., is going to be a phenomenal gun. I'll have to have one shortly after I can, after they're available. I am highly impressed. It's definitely on par with some of the best handguns on the market in the U.S. and I wish I'd have seen a few more of them years ago. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, Please feel free to post them below and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Thanks for watching.